Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome, man. Welcome to Beyond Classic Rock. Uh, today, man, I've got an album reaction coming your way, and um, it's featuring the music of a band called King Buffalo, and the uh, album is called The Burden of Restlessness. Never heard of them, man. And um, hopefully, uh, it's uh, something, one of those uh, gems, you know, that just kind of fell under the radar. Usually, that's the case. Uh, first off, I just want to give a shout out and a thanks to Bayou Maccabee. Thanks, Bayou. I appreciate you introducing me to something new, man. I'm looking forward to checking this out. King Buffalo, The Burden of Restlessness. And um, it's got seven tracks. And it looks like each individual track is nice and long, so I'm guessing that these guys will do really well with extended jams and stretching the song out. You know how I like it. Anyways, let's hit this up, man. King Buffalo, The Burden of Restlessness, full album. Let's get it. Cheers. Nice long intro. I like it already. What is he saying about it? Is it the aftermath of a really bad relationship or is it like um, aftermath of war?
Would you call these guys progressive rock? How do we label them? extended jam. It gives them so much time to express themselves and convey what they want you to hear and feel. I don't know how to label them so far though. Habitation. Quiet desperation. The ends are not meeting up. Still trying to figure it out. I really dig how their instrumentation 
is just as much a feature in the song as the vocals. They're hitting you from a cerebral aspect. what I'm hearing so far. They've got a really, really excellent command of their musicianship and how they mix it in with the vocals. I like though how you don't need a lot of vocals in it to convey what they're trying to get across. Locusts. The instrumentation, the musical delivery, 
has more uh, to say almost than the, the vocals. You know what I'm saying? represents invading forces, war, the end times. It isn't just about a swarm of locusts. It never is. It always represents something. Excellent. That was a great jam. Silverfish.
good time, good climax. That was a great job. Was this dude in jail? I keep picturing him in jail, just lying on his cot, staring at the wall, staring at the cracks in the walls. And he's got nothing else to look forward to. That's the visual I've got. I might have missed it, though. Grifter. Christ. Roof in the back. It's the lifeblood of this song.
that was an excellent, excellent track. Their musicianship is tight, on point. And I love their little cerebral touch that they've got. That's what they're promoting. They really take you on a trip. The Monks.
That was excellent. I compare that to the uh, feeling that I get whenever I listen to um, uh, Stranglehold by Ted Nugent. That rolling bass line, it's not in a hurry to get anywhere, it's just taking you along. Same effect.
I gotta be wrong about this. But are they singing from the point of view of being a damned field mouse? Muffling around in the soil, waiting for a falcon to pounce down and end it? It's, that's what I'm visualizing, but I had to have missed it. They're not singing from the point of view of a damn mouse, are they? King Buffalo, the burden of restlessness. Wow, man. What a fantastic album. Excellent, excellent album, man. Definitely. That shit was a 5 out of 5 for me. Every single song was fantastic. I love their approach to creating music. The priority and the focus is the actual music itself the instrumentation, what they're creating in sound, not so much the vocals. The vocals are just basically a way to set up and then the music takes over and it really expands and broadens everything. Really, really creative and excellent way to approach your musicianship and your music. Yeah, and they have very interesting things to talk about. Their subject matter is not dealing with some sappy ass love songs and broken hearted this and all of that shit they're talking about some serious things even when they are singing from the point of view of a damn field mouse you know they are talking about the consequences they're talking about all of those different things and they're dealing with the internal angst the internal struggle the challenge to overcome and then become something better recreating yourself reinventing yourself they're talking about some serious shit you know and the musicianship really really shores up the message and um uh the lyrics it's just a setup for the musicianship to take over this is not listening meant for everybody uh because some people would find themselves lost in it and not able to follow some people are just too anxious to get to the bottom line to the end this is about the journey so some type of music uh, is not appropriate for some type of uh, listener personality 
and uh, temperament and tolerance. You know what I'm trying to say? Not everybody is big on Pink Floyd, for example. Uh, the, that kind of cerebral approach to it. And this is why a lot of people can't engage Pink Floyd. It's the same way with these guys. A lot of people won't be able to wrap around it because of the cerebral touch. And to give you that cerebral effect, you've got to take the time, stretch things out, set things up, right? So this isn't for everybody. But the people that like it, the people that get it, this is good shit. Um... And, you know, here's another big point. I'm going to get in trouble for this. Uh, this came out in 2021. It just goes to show to teach me and all of the old cats that prescribe to the classic rock channel that there are. I remember I said at the top of this reaction, it might be a gem. Just looking at the fact that there are seven tracks and it tells me that these guys are probably stretching out the song and they've got all of these things going on. I had a feeling right away even before going into it and I was right about it. You know, so the old cats on the classic rock channel, they need to be exposed to this. They need to see that there are great artists out there, contemporary artists that have a lot of this kind of uh, appeal. And along the course of this reaction, I wasn't quite sure if this act, these guys were from back in the day or if they were actually contemporary. It's only when I looked at the a list of songs, the track list, that I realized that this album came out in 2021. So uh, these are contemporary artists and they've really got a fantastic command of the structure of a rock song, the structure of what it is they're trying to convey. And they're using the uh, platform of the cerebral attack to really appeal to you. And let me tell you, they've appealed to me. This is a really, really excellent album and uh, a very, very good listen. So what I'm gonna do, and I'm gonna piss off a few old cats, and that's okay. I'm gonna put this up on the classic rock platform and the beyond rock platform just like some of the old cats can totally get behind embracing tool for example because um and with tool covering led zeppelin's um uh geez sorry it's early in the morning with um tool covering led zeppelin you know uh it is easier for them to kind of embrace tool a little bit even though they're kind of newer and modern but old cats are very very um temperamental as to what they'll allow let me put it to you like that i remember man when i um one time i wanted to do a social experiment and i did a reaction for alice in chains man and i put that shit up on the classic rock platform yo you wouldn't believe the backlash that I got from these old cats. So at the risk of doing the same thing again, but you know, I have a point in doing this. I want to stir it up a little bit and I want to show the old cats that there are great contemporary artists that have those excellent ingredients of creating really, really good rock. And, you know, I mean, you might consider this progressive. You might consider this alternative. You might uh, consider this whatever kind of rock there is out there. But they're definitely using the classic structure of creating this album. So I want to show this to the old cats. Because a lot of old cats do not migrate over to the Beyond Classic Clock uh, platform. So I want to show them um, this as well. And they can, you know... Uh, pat me on the back or they can smack smack me upside the head it really depends on who it is that's doing the listen but you know what i'm gonna put this up on the classic rock platform because um simply because these guys are great and they need as much exposure as possible and i'm definitely going to do my part you get a really big pass and it's a big deal for a contemporary artist to make it onto my classic rock platform get through me first of all the gatekeeper and then the second big gate, gate, the old cats, I'm telling you, it's a really big deal. And I have a feeling uh, that they're going to accept this more so or not, more so than not. So having said all of that, I could totally fall flat on my face and maybe their next album might be totally the shit or whatever the case is. But I'm just going based on the heels of what I just finished hearing. Uh, so Bayou says... Here's a bit of band and album info written by myself. 
as there's nothing available on Wikipedia or really anywhere else that I could find online. So some of this is from bits of information I gathered from various interviews of the band that I've heard and read, as well as some info found on the band's own website. Hmm, okay. So we got uh, three paragraphs of information. It's better than nothing. Uh, yeah, let's read this. So Bayou writes, King Buffalo is a power trio from Rochester, New York, formed in September 2013 by founding members Sean McVeigh on guitar, synth, and vocals, Dan Reynolds on bass and synth, and Scott Donaldson on the drums, all of whom are still in the band to this day. The band describes their own sound as heavy, psychedelic rock. Okay, which I think is a perfect description. Their sound to me is kind of like if you could throw Black Sabbath, Pink Floyd, and a bunch of devil's lettuce together into a big blender on the highest setting. Then King Buffalo would pour out as a fine, buttery smooth milkshake of psychedelic metal. I hear you, Bayou. Um, I believe that they're definitely a mixture of a Pink Floyd, and I don't know who else, but they're a mixture of a Pink Floyd for sure, and someone else. Uh, Black Sabbath would not be my second choice in that mix. It would be something like a, um, maybe not even an ELP, maybe not a King Crimson, uh, but somewhere along the lines of a progressive sound. You know what I mean? I can't uh, figure out the second uh, piece of that ingredient, but Pink Floyd for sure. Speaking of Pink Floyd, when I get home a little later, uh, I'm going to do Pink Floyd, The Wall. Now you're gonna say, well, what the hell? You've already done that in 2019. I know, but Finesse Muse, this guy knows how to convince me to do almost anything. He's got, he's charming, this dude. Finesse Muse said that he has this really cool link of um, uh, Dark Side of the Moon that has um, kind of like a, a picture collage uh, that goes along with the music and you know I gotta hit that up so that's what I'm gonna be doing uh, later on today so look for that dropping very soon after this particular reaction and fingers crossed that they both make it make it onto YouTube alright so their sound to me is kind of like a blend of Black Sabbath Pink Floyd and a bunch of Devil's Lettuce together into a blender right then King Buffalo would pour out as fine, buttery, smooth milkshake of psychedelic music. The band is considered to be primarily a live band. They're fantastic live, by the way. Okay, so you've seen them. And to date, they have self-released as an independent artist four EPs, three full-length studio albums, and one full-length live album, with The Burden of Restlessness being their second to latest uh, album released. That was an excellent album. Uh, a 5 out of 5 for me. With King Buffalo being primarily a touring live act, when COVID, hit, uh, when COVID shut down the world, the band was hit hard without the ability to play any live shows, and while most recording studios were shut down because of the pandemic as well, the band decided to spend their off time writing new music. Fortunately, their practice space is large enough that the band could still get together to jam by spreading out into separate corners of the same large room so they could jam together and write a new album. And write new music they did. Within the span of time that everything was shut down from the pandemic, they came up with enough material to write three complete studio albums, recording them at their own home studios. The themes of all three albums revolve around the hardships, uncertainty, and doubts brought on by being forced to live life in a shutdown pandemic world. And okay, okay, I totally get it now. And the three new albums together can be considered as a trilogy with all songs tied together by pandemic related themes. Okay, I totally get it. Just reflecting back on uh, what I've been listening to, I totally get it. The first installment of the Quarantine Trilogy of albums was The Burden of Restlessness, released June of 2021. The second was Acheron, released in December of 2021, while the third has been written and recorded 
but is not set to be released until sometime in 2022, following the conclusion of their current world tour. May rock and metal never die out. No. And you know, with social media, uh, we really got to do our part to uh, expose, you know, these really great gems, as I call them, because these guys are uh, really, really fantastic and uh, people have to know about them. So I'm going to do my part for sure. Thank you for all of the great times, Wayne. Much peace and love. God bless. Bayou Maccabee. Bayou, thank you very much. I appreciate um I appreciate all of your recommendations, and this is our last collaboration before I uh, I jet from the channel. So thank you very much. I appreciate. I believe it's two and a half years you've been with me, and on both platforms. So thank you. I appreciate all of the recommendations you've sent. Uh, so on the uh, Beyond platform, Christopher is next. And that'll be the very, very last reaction on the uh, Beyond Classic Rock platform that I do. And then on the Classic Rock platform, I've got um, Finesse, like I said. Uh, I've got uh, Svein, Svein Eichvoll, and then finally Evelyn. And so um, that'll be concluded probably by Monday or Tuesday-ish. And uh, that'll be the last... Um, reaction on the classic rock platform now on both platforms i will still be around i will still be active somewhat and um whenever one of our great influencers uh from either genre uh pass i'll stop what i'm doing and do a tribute so you'll see me from time to time sadly it's going to be in the form of a tribute uh, you might see me if there's something great in music that happens, like a Led Zeppelin reunion, for example. But other than that, uh, I'm going to be pretty dormant on the channel. Now, you can still get a hold of me just by, you know, messaging me the normal way that you do, um, my patrons. Even if you cancel your support on Patreon, but you keep your account on Patreon, you can still communicate with each other. And you can still get a hold of me directly by direct messaging. And uh, some of you, uh, some of my very, very first subscribers, you still have my private email. So I'm uh, always going to be around. So you'll still see me uh, from time to time. If you need to get a hold of me or whatever the case is, uh, let me know and um, uh, we'll, we'll be in touch. If I happen to be, I don't know, I, I like to drive a lot. And so if I happen to be driving down into your neck of the woods and that sort of thing um let me know and then maybe we'll meet up for lunch or something but uh yeah usually i uh go from seattle all the way down to uh florida and i end up usually in jacksonville uh sometimes i'll end up in uh cape coral fort myers that sort of thing so uh yeah you know uh we'll, we'll stay in touch you'll still see me around all right now, back to Bayou. Thank you again, man. This was a really, really excellent introduction to these guys. And they've got all the ingredients to be very, very household. And um, this is a time we're living in, though, where we need to do a lot to give them as much exposure, exposure as possible. And, um, you know, with so much uh, um, vying for our attention and our attention spans being... Um, so short these days you know it's easy for great acts like this to fall between the cracks but you know having a youtube channel being on social media and a whole bunch of other great um uh, reactors out there let's spread it around man these guys definitely need to have a platform for recognition so that they might have a chance to be launched you know what i'm saying so king buffalo i dig it all right, Bayou, thank you again, brother. Take care of yourself. We'll stay in touch. And uh, everybody on uh, this platform, uh, that being uh, beyond classic platform, it's Christopher tomorrow. And on the classic platform, it's uh, Spine tomorrow. So I'll see you then. Peace.